Hey everyone, here's a quick heads up. The Agile Online Summit is coming soon. You can get all the details at uh, bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. Yes, it's all lowercase, all one word. That's bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. Stick with us till the end of the episode to know the dates, the tracks, and some surprises we have ready for you. But for now, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. And uh, this week, joining us from Romania is Carla Merza. Hey, Carla, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you. By the way, did I pronounce your uh, last name correctly? No. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, so how do how do you pronounce it correctly? Carla Merza. Merza. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I went for a little bit more Eastern accent, but obviously yes, that was the wrong. People do that a lot. That's why I was smiling like that. <laughs> that was that was obviously wrong. But don't worry. I'm famous for murdering people's names. You're not the first one, and unfortunately not the last one either. Anyway, so everybody, Carla is an agile professional with more than ten years' experience in the IT industry, specializing in empowering diverse teams and organizations worldwide, from optimizing agile practices to enhancing tool usage. She's dedicated to expanding knowledge and driving efficiency in multicultural environments. So, uh, Carla, that was a short intro. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, how did you end up becoming a Scrum Master? Yeah, sure. So actually, uh, I want to give a bit of a background first. So in Romania, uh, we are used to this top-down management. We have older population. Uh, there is a like a patriotism going on. And the focus is mostly on religion, family, and work. So basically, the expectation from this younger generation is to go to university, do the master's degree, then get a very well-paid job. And this is what uh, people mostly deal with my age. So, of course, I also did that. So I was actually studying automation uh, at the Technical University of Cluj-Napoca. Uh, and in my third year, I got a job as a quality assurance engineer. Um, of course, I got through the ranks from junior to mid to senior and uh, I also changed multiple companies, but I was feeling kind of sad or maybe unmotivated. So I knew that something is not right. I saw my technical colleagues being up to date with whatever was happening in the market. I wasn't. So that kind of made me think about what am I doing with my professional life? So uh, I started going to networking events, to conferences, and basically I met people with very diverse backgrounds. And that gave me more hope that I can find a job that is more fulfilling to me. <laughs> I met an agile coach and she started mentoring me in an informal way. We were friends and we were talking about a lot of situations she encountered at work. Um, then I found myself act actually taking uh, responsibilities at work that are of a Scrum Masters, like facilitating meetings, making sure uh, the team is feeling empowered, welcoming new joiners, uh, everything that wasn't my job as a senior Scrum, uh, as a senior quality assurance engineer, but more on the you know people side or Scrum Master side, and. Uh, because of these networks I had at that point, someone contacted me and offered me a project uh, in which to work as a Scrum Master. So I quit my corporate job. I opened a company, a leg legal e entity, and uh, I started doing consultancy work. And uh, along the way, I got more involved into communities, uh, mostly for women in tech because I saw uh, discriminatory, let's say, uh, environment here in the IT world. So um, when the pandemic hit, I, I was actually very fortunate to have a lot of projects and from all around the globe. I was working with South African companies. I was working with German companies. Uh, so 
for me, it was the best um, period to grow. And that's how I become an agile professional. Absolutely. And uh, obviously, we never know what happens in the future, right? But sometimes there's a clear message. And, and uh, uh, it, I noted that you said, I felt sad, so something was not right and I needed to change. And that's a very important aspect because that kind of intuition we also need as Scrum Masters to, to figure out that, okay, what needs to change or even if something needs to change by just mm -hmm. feeling how things are evolving for us and, and, of course, for the team. Now, coming back to the Scrum Master role, of course, it's not always a bed of roses either, right? Like <laughs> Scrum Masters can also be frustrated or sad or angry with how things go. And usually that happens when, when we fail and there's a problem or there's a problem we can't overcome. And because today's Monday, fail Monday here on the podcast, Carla, let, let's go through one of those stories. So share a story of a moment where you as a scrum master, you tried to do your best, but at that time, as it so often happens, the best just wasn't good enough. Tell us that story. We'll dive into the takeaways later, but tell us that story first. Okay. I briefly mentioned about uh, being a woman in IT and I encountered a lot of situations in which me being a lot younger and working with mostly men, I wasn't having the credibility to um, to be taken seriously as a Scrum Master. So that's one of the points that I want to raise and I learned very many things about uh, being a Scrum Master from it. And another example that I would like to bring up is when I was working as a contractor. It was a large corporation. Uh, I was um, managing, let's say, two teams. It was a car selling website. And I took over from another Scrum Master. And the mood was very somber, I guess. Like you could see people are very unmotivated. You could see that uh, the leadership team doesn't believe in them. You could see the client doesn't believe in them. And uh, the mood was very, very bad. And uh, the solution from the leadership team was to bring on two more teams and one more agile coach. So from this example, you could see that... Um, the solution wasn't... Um... So tell us a little bit more. So you, you went there and you saw that the team was kind of somber, as you described, right? Demotivated, maybe uh, disengaged. And uh, in order to, I guess, increase the effect, uh, the productivity, uh, you didn't say that, but that was my thinking, the leadership decided, okay, let's bring two more teams, right? To get more stuff yep. done. Uh, like when when the leadership communicated the decision and, and when the other teams came in, how did the previous teams react? Like what was going on at that time? They were really stressed. They didn't understand. Uh, they were feeling like, hey, aren't we good enough? I mean, we are delivering and we were having these releases constantly, uh, but we were on time. But the the feeling was that, hey, we are not good enough. What's happening? And so, when the other teams joined, how did that then like kind of reflect in, in the other teams joining? They trusted less the leadership team and also myself because uh, I was new. I was a junior scrum master. I didn't know how to handle this situation very well. And uh, you could see that people wanted to leave. They, the motivation dropped a lot. And we could see efforts being done, but with 14 layers of leadership team, that was very, very hard to do. So 14, yeah. one yeah. four. One four, exactly. So so tell me a little bit more. So if you would have the opportunity to kind of go back and with the knowledge that you have now, you go back and relive that story, what would you have done differently? I don't think I could have done anything differently because maybe take care more of my mental health in this situation. Um, it was a project that was doomed to fail. And I could see that after a few months working on it when I also decided to leave the project and I gave two months notice. And with one month before my notice period ended, 
we learned that the project was shutting down. So everyone was leaving the project. So the main takeaway is that even if you do your best, sometimes projects are doomed to fail and that's okay. Yeah. And and it's very difficult, of course, for us to accept because we are in the middle of it, right? And to some extent, we failed. And and that's okay, right? Like that's also part of the 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 story here that sometimes we can't affect other aspects that are beyond our control and even beyond our influence. And we need to accept that, you know, this this pro this particular project was doomed to fail. And yes, that's and okay. That and don't put on ourselves this responsibility of the project failing and how others feel. I think that's also something that we as Scrum Masters should learn to do our job, but uh, sometimes taking over feelings from the team or um, any other emotions, because sometimes people need to vent and they need to, you know, clear their mind. And they do that by venting to you. Um, it's important to separate this, like the job and your friendship maybe with the people in your team. You want to be there for them as a team. You know, it would help their mental health. But also being uh, aware that your job as a scrum master is to be in between and also... Um, not get too involved into this, still do your job for the benefit of the entire team. Absolutely. And that's a very important statement, right? Like separate the job that we are doing from the relationship we have with the people, because sometimes we have to hear the venting, but we shouldn't take it in as responsibility for us. Very well said, Carla. Thank you very much for sharing that story. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around. So, as I was saying at the beginning of the show, on October 22nd this year, we will have the first day of the Agile Online Summit 2024. The summit will take place from October 22nd to 24th, so make sure you book your calendars as there will be loads of sessions for you to attend, including live QAs with the speakers, networking sessions and more. This year, we're also organizing regular networking events online so that you get to talk and meet your peers before the summit even starts. So if you want to know more, check them out at uh, bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. That's uh, all one word, all lowercase. That's bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. You can sign up for a free ticket and get notified when those warm-up events will be organized. So stay tuned. Now, regarding the summit, our opening keynote will be Marshall Goldsmith's exposition of a project he's been working on for a while. That's marshallgoldsmith.ai. And uh, Marshall is an author and also a leadership coach who sold over 3 million books worldwide and has been considered twice number one leadership thinker in the world by Thinker50. And you definitely don't want to miss that. If you want to know more about the tracks, here they are. We will have four tracks. The first track is Shift from Product to People. In this track, we will explore what we call the third wave of Agile adoption, exploring psychological safety, coaching techniques, and more to unlock your team's potential. In this track, you can learn to foster trust, encourage innovation, and build high-performing teams. Transform your approach and the future of Agile to be much more people-centric. The second track we have for you is value-centric product development. In this track, we will learn how to master product management and ownership by focusing on value. We will learn to identify, validate, and deliver what customers truly need and dive into customer-centric approaches, experimentation techniques, and continuous market validation ideas. We have to accept that if Agile is to succeed, we have to become value-centric, and that's what we explore in this track. The next track is titled Agile Coaching Masterclass. We want to help take your coaching to the next level and transform team performance. Develop key Agile coaching skills, emphasizing people-centric and value-centric approaches in line with the previous tracks. 
and we will help you learn how to guide teams towards value focus and effectiveness. In this track, we want to help you unlock the potential of the individuals and the organizations you will be working with. After all, the future of Agile is coaching centric. And finally, the last track, and definitely not the least, is all about the future of Agile. Explore the trends shaping Agile's evolution. The previous three tracks do that as well. Discover real world success stories from innovative companies pushing the boundaries of what's possible today and learn how practitioners are evolving Agile practices, gain insights in how to revolutionize your own approach. After all, the future of Agile is here, so let's explore it. You will also have the opportunity to network with your peers, so get your ticket and join our Slack at bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit. That's all lowercase, all one word, bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. As always, we have free tickets and the VIP ticket, so check them out. It will all be available at bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. I'll see you on the conference floor.